Hey guys, Wayne here from Tech Made Easy. Today I'm doing a beginner video on how to use the Samsung Galaxy J3. I'm just gonna take it from step one for a first time smartphone user and go over some of the basic things you'll need to know to use this phone, especially if this is your first smartphone. So we're gonna start with the buttons. So on the left side, you're gonna have two volume buttons, volume up and volume down. On the right side, you will have a power slash standby button. And the way this works is your phone is, uh, if the screen is on, the phone is on. But if you hit this button, it puts the phone into sort of a standby mode. So it's not off, but it's on standby. So you just tap it to turn it on, tap it to turn it off. Now, if you want to completely turn the phone off, you will have to hold down this power button for a few seconds. It'll take you to this screen and then you can hit the power button up here and that will completely turn the phone off. So this is an important thing to note. Um, at the bottom here, you will have um, your home button, which you will press to get back to your main screen. And you've got two touch buttons right here. Um, right here, let me adjust the focus here. You will have your charging port where you're gonna plug in your charger to charge the phone and you will have your headphone jack. So if you want to plug, it, plug in a speaker or headphones to play music, you plug it in right there, okay? All right, so we're gonna just press that power button. You can also press the button down here as well, the home button, to turn the screen on as well. Now, once the screen is on, you will have to put your finger on the front and slide it. That's how you unlock the phone, okay? So just an important thing to note, Power off, power on, finger on the screen and just drag it across and that's how you unlock the phone, okay? Now from here, we're gonna go over these uh, touch buttons on the bottom here and a little bit more about this home button. So the first thing you need to know is that no matter what screen you're on, so one, this is, this is considered the home screen, okay? If I were to tap on one of these little icons that are called apps, it, uh, think of it like a program for a computer on phones they are called apps. So if I were to open, for example, the phone app here, and I wanted to get back to the home screen, all I have to do is press my home button, and it'll take me back here. So no matter what you see on the screen, almost all the time, if you just press this button, it will take you back to this screen, which is your home screen, where you can find just about everything, okay? Now, the way you operate the phone, obviously, is by swiping left and right. So when we're on the home screen, you can usually swipe left, and there's some different things you'll see on those other home screens, and you swipe right to see all of your other options. So that's just basic navigating the phone. You also have these two buttons down here. This is your recent apps. This is how you can see uh, what's running on your phone. So for example, we, op we opened the phone app and then we went back home. This app is still running, it's just running in the background. So if you wanna go back to it, you could either tap the phone button here, or we could tap here, and this will again show us our recent apps and things that are running. And this is sort of a shortcut to see what's running and also get back to something you were working on. So if you wanted to get back to the phone app, I see it's right here, I can tap on it. Okay, I'm gonna go back home. Here we have our back button. This always takes you back one step. So for example, if I were to go into the phone app and then I was to tap on my contacts, I just did one step which was opening the app and the next step was tapping the contact. So I can use my back button to go back one step, tap it once. Normally it will take you back to the previous thing you did. In this case, it took us home. Let me show you a different example of how that button works because it does vary from time to time. If I were to go into, let's say, um, my files, if I went into files, and then I went to internal storage. Now I could tap the back button one time, take me back to where I was, and if I tap it again, it'll take me out of that app. So it's normally will just take you back one step. These are just all different things to help you in navigating the phone. It could also work where if you're on the internet and you're on a, a website, for example, and you 
go forward one page. So let's just go to a website for an example. Remind me later. So we're on AT&T's website right now. And if I were to just select an option on the screen, let's see here. If I were to just tap on sports. So now I'm tapping on something within the app. It's taking me to a different page. If I use that back button, it took me back one page. So it sort of undid what I just did. So that's normally how this button works. And if I press it again, it should take me out of this app and back to the home screen. And there we go. So that's your back button, your recent apps, and your home button. So now that we've got those buttons down, we also have uh, what's called your navigation panel. And that's where you're gonna see what are called notifications. So different important pieces of information that come in on the phone, where you look at them is in the notification panel. Take your finger and we swipe down from the top and this allows you to see all of your notifications. And an example of a notification is maybe you downloaded a game that you wanted to play. This will show you, hey, your game successfully downloaded. Uh, maybe you have your email address on the phone and someone sent you an email. Your emails will also show up in this section as well. If someone called you and you missed the call, you would see it in this section. It would say missed call from and either have your phone number or the name. Also, if someone sent you a text message, you would see a little preview of the message in this section. So um, this is just where you are able to see the different pieces of information that are coming through on your phone. And if there's one that you see that's important, you can tap on it and it will take you right to that specific notification. So we don't have any missed calls right now or text messages or emails to show you, but essentially you'll always see it in that section. It's just a swipe down from the top. And when you're finished, you can swipe back up to get rid of it. Just that easy. Now also at the top of this menu, we have a few more things. So you can drag this down one time and then take your finger at the top and drag it again and it will open up this shortcut menu. In this menu, you'll find what are called your notif your what are called your switches. And the switches control different things on your phone. For example, if you would like to connect to Wi-Fi, maybe you have wireless internet at your home, you would want to make sure that your Wi-Fi indicator, which is right here, is lit up blue because it means that your Wi-Fi is turned on. You can't connect to Wi-Fi if Wi-Fi isn't turned on. So if this isn't blue, you would tap it and that would make it blue. It was already blue and I just tapped it, so I, that means I turned it off. I'm gonna tap it again to turn it back on. We also have, um, if you wanted to put your phone on vibrate, right up here, it currently has a picture of a little speaker and it says sound. If I press it once, it'll then say vibrate. So now your phone is on vibrate. If you get a notification or someone calls you, the phone is gonna vibrate. If we tap it again, it says mute, which means that your phone is not gonna vibrate or make any noise if you get a notification or if someone calls you or texts you. So it's important that if you ever put your phone on mute, you unmute it when you're finished or you won't hear any sound from your phone. You've also got Bluetooth and airplay mode and you've got your flashlight. If you ever want to use your phone as a flashlight, you can just tap here and now you have a flashlight. It'll use your phone's flash as a flashlight. We would tap it again to turn it off, just like that. We have our power save mode. If you, your phone battery is low and you don't have your charger, if you tap this, it will put the phone in a power save mode. You so it says medium power save mode, press apply. And now it's gonna turn off some things that are running in the background so the phone will run faster or the phone will run um, longer and use less battery, okay? Remember, pull down once and then pull down again. Now right here, you will find your screen brightness. So if your screen is not bright enough for you, you want it to be brighter, you can control it by just putting your finger on this little bubble and moving it forward 
or backwards and it will get darker or brighter. When you go on the movies, you may want to turn this down a bit so that your phone isn't bright if you need to check it. That's how you control your brightness. There we go. All right. So next, we want to show you how to download an app. Let's say you want a, a game, solitaire game, or a card game, or Sudoku, or any kind of game, slots. You would do it from what is called the Play Store. This little icon on the front. If you don't see this on the front, you may have a button on the side here that says Apps. And if you tap on that button, it'll, you can usually find the Play Store in this section. But everything that you would download on your phone would be done from the Play Store. So this is important to know where this is. If you don't see it here or here, you can also tap up here and then the keyboard will pop up and you just type in play and then your Play Store should come up as well. Now downloading an app or a game is super easy. All you have to do is in the section that says Google Play, you're gonna tap and you can either type in the game or you can press the microphone and you can have it, um, you can just say it and it'll search it by your voice. So watch this. I'm gonna search for Facebook, okay? So we're gonna tap the microphone. Facebook. You wanna make sure if you say it, you say it in a quiet environment so that it doesn't pick up any background noise. And now we see that Facebook has come up and so normally right here you would see a button that says install and you would tap the green button and that would allow you to install it onto the phone. Let's try something different since Facebook is already on the phone. Let's say we just want uh, to see what games are on the phone. We can type in games. And as you start typing, it's gonna make suggestions. So I can just tap games right here to speed up the process. And you can, um, First, look through the list here, and these are this will narrow down what kind of things it gives you. So for example, you may want to tap on free, and then it'll search for free games. See that? And you could get even more specific. Maybe you want a poker game, a free poker game. Tap on poker. So now, you're gonna use your finger and just slowly slide up the screen until you find one that you like. You just keep going. And maybe you say, oh, I like this DH Texas poker. You're gonna just tap anywhere in this section. And right here, you'll have a little video or picture so you can see what the app looks like. And if you wanna download it, you're gonna tap the install button. So we tap there. And, and you wait for this to get all the way across. This basically is showing you that it's downloading it onto the phone. So. And it's almost done, we're at 68%. So once it's finished downloading, um, it'll then install. And right now it's saying installing. So you give it a minute. And you don't have to stay on the screen. It will begin to install in the background. But once you finish, you can tap open and it will open up the app and allow you to play it. Press okay. You're gonna press allow. and then we just downloaded a game. And when you're finished playing it, you can go ahead and press the home button here, and this will take you back to the main screen. Okay, and if you wanna find that game, you would tap the apps button right here and just swipe over, and your new games are always on the next page. So there it is. Just as a note, some of you guys may not have the apps button right here, 
you may have, instead of seeing it here, you may have to swipe up. So it just, it varies depending on what version of the Shade 3 you have, but the older versions will have an app button in the corner. All right, the very last thing we're gonna go over is um, how to move the applications that you see on the screen or apps. Maybe you wanna move this to a different page. Take your finger and just gently place it over what you wanna move. And then once you see the screen do that, you can drag it, keep your finger on the screen, and I can drag it all the way to the edge, it'll take you to the next page, and I can just drop that app right there. That's how you move an app. If you wanna get rid of something, there's something on one of these screens that you don't want to be there at all, you would hold down on it, and as soon as you see these two options show up at the top, you're gonna drag it, keep your finger on it, and move it all the way up to the trash can, and then let it go. And now it's totally gone. If we swipe over here, we don't see it. We swipe over here, we don't see it. It's been removed from the home screen, but you can still find it in this section where all your other apps are. Okay. So that's it guys, this has been the Samsung Galaxy J3 for beginners. Do me a favor, uh, leave me a comment below if you did find the video helpful. And also if you would like us to make a part two where we can go into even more detail about things like uh, setting up a wall, like changing the background picture of the phone and how to use the camera and different things like that. So if you wanna see a follow up video, leave a comment down below, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe as well. Thanks again for watching, take care and have a good one.